Shalom, Shalom, Karlayim, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Waharah Kapadash. Double honor to the apostle and the elders who teach and rule well. Okay, peace and salutation to the brothers who keep pushing the truth, you know, all over the globe, to the Akim, the Gabarium, you know, and Baha Yam Shal, you know, Yasharala. The elect of Yesharala and Shalom Wahab to the you know the, the, the sisters, you know, the few sisters, sincere sisters that we have in this truth and shalom to the brothers, you know, in this truth. Right? So uh it's your brother, you know, Yazakal Ban Yahawada, alright, and then um Amari again. You know, that's the second installment, you know, the second video that I'm doing, you know, English wise, because I do French first, but you know, I decided to go English because there's a lot to say, there's a lot to learn, you know. Whatever I learn, you know, with uh, the Church of Yahweh 144, the brothers of the hopeful elect, and you know, the camp that I've been through, you know, I've been with. You know, you always learn something. So now it's time, it's time to share it. It's time to share it. And I know brothers will be blessed, man. You know, brother will be blessed. Right, so today, as I said, you know, in, uh, in my past video, the, late, the, 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 the last video, I said that um, I was going to touch on... Um, <coughs> I was going to touch on... Um, uh, like a, a very important... You know, lesson, all right, a very important point in that, in this walk, man. Because at the end of the day, you know, we have to show, you know, um, that, you know, we are changed, okay? Because we come in this truth, and also, you know, we come in this truth with, um, with the past, okay? With the past, you know, baggages, with the past burden. All right, and it's imperative and important that you know along the way we get rid of the old man. So, the title of the lesson really is "Who make that decision when it's crunch time?" You know what I mean by crunch time, right? Who make a decision? You know when it's crunch time, the old man or the new man? Okay, the old man or the new man, and that's what we're gonna go into today. Because, you know, I had to sit down and really, really ask myself, man. Ask myself the real question. You know, I had to ask myself, and I used to say this to myself, are you going to carry on, you know, acting like a nigga though you're in the truth? And that was like my early stage in this truth. You know, because what I found out, you know, observing Israel as a whole is that, this thing of ours is not really a thing of ours, if you think about it. This thing that we're doing, this walk, you know, and this work that we're doing, this walk that we walk and this work that we're doing is of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Alright? It is controlled by Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. And the angels are watching us. So I found out that people that play with it at some point again. You know, either exposed or something happened. So I say, let me real, let me be real to myself, man. And I asked myself, I was like, will you be able, okay, to carry on this walk if you don't add fit, um, uh, um, prayers and fasting? All right. And once I was meditating upon that, I came to the real and, and speaking to brother like you know Allah Azar from France. And brother like, you know, La Hama, you know, I realized that, wow, it ain't going to be easy unless I really, this, I really take this truth seriously. And that's the reason why me personally, I always admire, you know, Apostle Taha and, uh, you know, Gaba, Ramlab and uh, Rokar because they've been in this truth for 30 years plus, man. And you can ask yourself, how did they get to that point? Even those who are in it for 10 years, 15 years. How did they get to that point? Because this truth is a very heavy burden. And if you don't move spiritually, at some point, 
you're going to just do the work, but you're going to be carnal, okay? So I don't want to be talking, just to be talking, so we won't get into the, into the word, man, and then we're going to break it down, break it down, hopefully, you know, by the grace of the Rakha Pradash, you know, we'll be able to really be edified at the end of this lesson, man, because, you know, we have to grow in this truth, man. We have to grow, otherwise, we're just going to be talking cheap. Like I say, you know, talk is cheap. A lot of brothers, they're in a situation right now, they can't even look themselves in the mirror, man. They go out and do the work, they do the work, you know, and they can't, even there was a time where I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror because I was doing, you know, I was going off. And I had to really be, you know, real, real, real myself. And that's what allowed me to really conquer certain sin. And sometimes, when you tell brothers that, oh, I have 10 sins and I'm down to one, one, some brothers thinking that you're proud. No, you're not proud. You're just, you know, motivating brothers and letting them know that it's, it's possible, man. It's just like if you found a treasure, you're trying to treasure. Just because you found a treasure doesn't mean that you're better than the next man. It's just like you found a treasure and then when you come, you say, yo, I found a treasure. This is how we can find a treasure, man. But you got a brother that will hate and will want to hurt you because you found a treasure. And you got a brother that will be like, hmm, you know what, I'm going to learn from this brother since he found a treasure. There's nothing to it, man. The most I left, Yahweh shall left an example. We just have to follow it. Some brother, you know, in their walk, in their experience, will be like able to gather that strength to go through it. And then from then, not, uh, next brother can learn. That's how you learn. How do you think we're learning? Because we're able to, we're able to read Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, they put it down for us, and we're just following the blueprint, the 12 apostle, Paul, they, 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 they put it down for us, for us to follow the blueprint, and that's it, so all you have to do is follow the blueprint, man, because this is a serious thing that we're doing, man, this is the best thing ever that was given to Jake in this, in this time, man, and brother better realize and understand that, you know, beside that, there's nothing else, man, there's nothing else. So we got Matthew, right? We're going to start with Matthew 23, okay? We're going to start with Matthew 23 and 14, right? So I'll read the words. Matthew 23 and 14 says, <coughs> woe, uh, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense to make long prayer, therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation, man. So let's not, you know, fall into that category where we become, you know, striving Pharisees. Now you have to ask yourself, if you when you read the Bible, it talks about a little leaven, you know. Uh 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 what does it say? Let me find it, man. I don't want to be paraphrasing. A little leaven. Very important, man. We're gonna go. We're gonna go through it today. A little leaven. Well, I say a little leaven leavens the whole lump. So, how does it start, man? The Pharisees in them. What happened when they came in the truth? Okay, first thing they did is learning the precept. Okay, so they learned the precept. You know how to break down this so they can go out. You know, and um, and do the work. And I will say this to young brothers, man. Take time with it, man. You can go out and preach, but while you're doing that, the first thing you must do, all right, is to really work on yourself. Is to really get rid of the old man, man. Because just because you know how to break down precept, that's not enough. Anybody, you know, all you have to do, you have people that have a good memory, for example. You have people that can see that and really study. All right, so within six months, they'll be able, they will understand, you know, the basic things that will allow them to go, you know, and defend the gospel on all level. But does it mean that the most I see them, because sometimes you want to go out, it's just like, like I say, man, when basketball was in fashion, people used to work hard. I used to play basketball, work hard at basketball, and I became very skillful in a way, right, because I used to work hard. All right, so it's the same thing. But... You work hard on the outward, so people, to be seen of men. So when you go, you place that, oh, that guy is good. So when you break down the precept, then you know that, oh, this guy is very good at breaking precept, breaking down precept, right? That's just being seen of men, man. Okay, but do you really, right, when the camera is off, do you really work on yourself, man? If you go in addiction, do you really work to break that addiction? 
or do you still are you in secrecy because there's a lot of brothers in this troop that are in secrecy they go out there to preach but boy they have a lot of bones in the closet man okay so matthew 24 all right and 14 and i'll read it again and he said woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrite and those scribes and pharisees and hypocrite they are the ones that are still living with the old men. They didn't get rid of the new men. And when they're confronted, they don't want to change it, man. When they're confronted, they don't want to change the scene. Because they don't have the strength to, they're lazy when they think about it. Because you're going to have to fast. Because the Bible says, you know, these one only come out or only goes when we pray and fasting and a lot of brothers in this captivity they don't want to hear about fasting well let me tell you this man i got good news and bad news for brothers that don't want to uh, 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 fast if you don't fast malak malakian if you don't fast you know what's going to happen you will never grow you will ne basically you will just be faking it but you will never ever ever grow to the to the to the potential that the most high you know know that you can reach you will never grow to that potential. You will be faking. You will be going out there. And guess what? Your leaven going to start showing. Your leaven going to start showing, man. And I don't. And we don't want to get to that point. We don't want to get to that point. Verse 13, he said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrite, for ye can pass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold, more the child of hell than yourself, man. Okay, twofold, man. So in this truth, you got the good and the bad. In this truth, you got brothers that are really working on themselves, you know, off camera. You know, like the way they work on themselves. Like the brother may have started in adultery. He was dealing with a woman when he came in the truth. But he got rid of it. Why? Because he was like, wow, you know how you count the, you count the cost? Meditation is supposed to be part of it, man. The reason why, you know... Uh, King Dawada was able to bring up, to, to come out with them, them songs when he was singing them because it was someone that was sitting there and meditating a lot. And us people, in, in this truth, when you come from work or you got a bit of time, you have to meditate upon everything, upon yourself. Because you're your first enemy, man. You have to judge, you have to be hard on yourself first. You got to be real with yourself and say to yourself, speak to yourself sometime, man. Look at you, bug out. Speak to yourself, man. Speak to you so you can be registered in your mind and you know that sin that you're committing will be like a voice in your in, in, in your in your spirit until you know you get rid of that of that of that of that iniquity that voice will always be you know echoing in your mind and that's how you get rid of it yo I need to sin I need to sorry I need to I need to fast man you know you got brother that fasting twice a week Brother can't even fast. You tell brother to fast twice a week, they started to curse you, they're, they're, they're upset. No, I'm not fasting twice a week. They're so into the flesh. But that same flesh don't come against you. They're going to bury you, man. Okay? So, we need to be careful in this truth because the time is coming where judgment will be knocking on the door, man. Okay? We'll be knocking on the door. Let's go. Let's go and read Jude 1 and 12. <coughs> let's read Jude, man. The book of Jude. You know, let's let's grow in this thing, man. Let's let's get to the next level. Yahusha is calling them to get to the and it's not easy because one thing about temptation, it will get you. Even, even when he goes, it will always come back, man. Like he said, man, the spirit goes, you know, in the dry places, you know, he gets bored to come. If he see that no one is living in that yard and it's tidy, when he says it's tidy and that because no one has the Holy Spirit because normally when the spirit is is kicked out. You know, you have to bring the Holy Spirit to dwell. But if the Spirit comes and no one lives there, He will break in and He will come with seven more spirit, man. And your condition, the past condition will be, your present condition will be worse than, you know, the past one. So, you know, when the most I remove the Holy Spirit from you, no, and, 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 and in principle, you always pull a, a, a wicked spirit, man. That's what He did to Saul. Okay? So we want, that's why, that Psalm 51 is very important. We have to ask the Most High to give, to leave the Spirit on us. And the way you, 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 you allow the Most High to leave the Spirit, the good Spirit, the Rechah on us, His Spirit is by, you know, practicing 
holiness and the way to practice holiness because some sins are very strong. You had this sin for like years and years and years, for decades. Do you think this, this, they're going to go like that? These are sins that are similar in your psychology. Sometimes you don't even think about it. You just do it like that in your sleep. So that means it will take more time for this sin to go. So it will take like they say a jihad, like a holy hall, a holy, sorry, a, a holy war. You're going to have to engage a holy war against sin, man. Because sin is the first enemy of any prophet, man. Prophet that don't grow in this truth is because they're laden with sin. Prophet that don't grow in this truth, they are laden with sin. The one where you're lazy, you don't want to do the thing of the spirit. You just want to go out and preach. But very soon you'll be naked, man. Read 2 Samuel, the first chapter, even the last chapter of 1 Samuel, all right? And you will see how the Most High dealt with Saul and his family, man. What the Most High has done with you is not a pleasant movie, it's a horror movie, man. Okay? And King Dawanda, he knew that. That's why he never played with the Most High. Obviously, yes, he did some things, but when he came back, he made sure he never did it, man. He made sure he never did it again. Adultery is a big sin, okay? Adultery is a big sin and amongst other sins. Jude 1 and 12. These, okay, are spots in your feast of charity when the feast reach you, feeding themselves without fear. Cloud, they are without water, carry the bow of wind, tree, wolf, fruit, um, weave, weave, uh, weavereth, without, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the root, by the root like here, okay? Raging wave of the sea, forming out of their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever, man. So that's, that's where we're going when we don't take things seriously. That when we don't take this work seriously, when we don't fight against the old man, that's our portion at the end of the day because the most I will put you in a situation where you can never come out of, man. And you can fool people for so long. You can fool people for so long, man. Okay? You can fool people sometimes, but you can't fool people every time. People will start to notice that you're a dead member, man. You go out and do the truth. You, you'll be an hypocrite. And you know what? An hypocrite die within, man. Because when you're on your own, one thing about the mind, you cannot escape what's in your mind. You can fool people that are with you. But when you come and sit down and on your own, that, that, that movie plays out. Who you are will play out. If you're an hypocrite, it will play out. If you, and sometimes, rather know that they're adulterers. Just that they're stuck in a situation, they don't know how to come out of it. Because they don't invite the spiritual, you know, side of things. They don't apply the spiritual tools. We got what? Well, we got prayers. But prayers has limits. So what do, we, what do we have again? Fasting, man. I'm telling you, it might sound simple, but fasting is very serious. When you start fasting, the term fast is like speeding the process. So if you find it hard to get rid of certain things, start fasting for a season, you will see. It will speed up the process, man. Before you know it, you're out of that situation and you're strong. Okay? So we're going to go and read, um, you know, uh, um, Psalm, Psalm 2 and 11, man. Because one thing we have to do as well, okay, is serve the Lord with trembling, man. Because the Mosai is the king of terror. Do you know what the Mosai can bring in your life? Do you know what the most I can bring in your life? Just because he doesn't really judge you right now doesn't mean that he, 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 he know, he forgive. And also, brother will be in sin, and I will say, I repent. It's that like Christianity repentance, where they will eat pork, and I will say, okay, you know, Father, I know. Tell me, which, which, which God do you know, right? Smoke cigarette and tells you, oh, I know it's good, man. You know, I really don't like it. It's a sin, and keep smoking it. To repent is to come out, is to cease, is to stop, is to make a U-turn, man. Okay? So that's what we need to do. When you do that, that's when you kill the old man, man. Okay? You got brothers, they may be in the truth, but when it comes to a certain decision, you know, to, to, to make, okay? They're going to let the, they're gonna let the old man, the old man, the old ratchet man, man. The old malicious man, man. The old fox. 
Okay? The silver fox or the golden fox will come out. The snake will come out. Okay? Because that's your nature. You were born, you grew up, you were molded in that spirit or with that spirit. So you, 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 you have to fight against that spirit so that even when they come and try to put the thing in your, the foot in your mind, you have to let the new man and say to yourself, what will Yahweh shall I do? Or what, what, would, what, what is the Bible saying? Because we are the priests, man. We are the one, the, the citizen of this, of the, of, of, of the, uh, of the Malak Waf, of the kingdom to come. And the kingdom have, you know, the constitution and the principle. And we, when people look at us, they could see it. Even though we're in captivity, when people look at us, they're like, yo, these guys are different, man. But the people around you, they don't even respect you. Because when you go around your friend, you, they don't see any, any, any change. They don't tell you that. When you tell them, oh, I, I'm a preacher, I go out to preach. They're like, okay, good. When they see you, they even say hi. But deep inside, they don't respect you. Because when they're with you, you don't manifest that because you want to be like them. You're around them. You know, think like, wow, this guy, you know, I don't understand. He said he changed, but he always around us. And we don't, he doesn't even challenge us. He just let us do what we do and it's cool. And what's going on? What it is like a lot of brothers in this truth, they, go, they suffer from abandonment. They suffer from abandonment. But what it is like when they were, when they were, when they were growing up, they didn't have like the structure that's in place, mommy, daddy. Most of the time it's uncle or auntie, grandpa or grandma who, so they don't, they lack that love. So even though they're in the truth, they're always going to go back to the friend in the world, know that those friends are wicked and there's something about spirit, man, and energy. Whatever energy you're around, that's the energy that will jump on you, man. But because they have, they don't, they didn't have love, they will just, you know, meet a, a Jezebel and they will go, <laughs> they will go and live with a Jezebel or they will, they will, they will live with a Jezebel man, and they're in the truth, man. Abandonment, man, spirit of abandonment. And I pray that, you know, the most I break that spirit over certain brothers, man. You know, because one thing about us, Jake, we lack love, man. We lack love. So Jake would do anything for love, man. Just to be accepted. But in this truth, this is this is this is the challenge. You have to be able, you know, to go through it, man. Because that's that pain. You ain't gonna get the, 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 the crown like that. You gotta, you gotta go through some pain, man. You will feel lonely. You will feel on your own abandoned. So what? The spirit around you anyway. The angel, you don't see them, but they're around you, man. The most is watching you, man. They're just purifying you. But sometimes it's hard for brother because they can't, they can't foresee. They're not trained to see these things. Though they, they claim to be in the truth and do the work, but, but it really, you know, in all actuality, they don't, they don't have that faith that I'm a one is not in them, man. You know, Psalm 2 and 11, and I read, say, serve the Lord, Yahweh, with fear and rejoice with trembling, man. Because you got to understand that this God can destroy you in a second. So when he, he, he gives you, okay, when you bestow upon you, you know, that grace, that understanding, you know, that wisdom, that knowledge, okay, you got to understand that this is precious, man. Imagine you having like a crown, you know, full of diamond, gold, all sort of, you know, precious stone, but fragile. And then you're walking, you're not taking care of it, and you break it, man. Imagine. And then, but the, the guy that gave it to you will come and collect it, will go, he, he, might, he might shoot you right there, because this thing costs cost millions, man. And you broke it like that. If he hasn't got, if he hasn't got a strong, you know, composure, he, he's, he's going, he's, if he got a gun or something, or he, he, he gonna come for you, man. So imagine when we play with the work. <coughs> well, you, that's why you always have like, you know, um, <coughs> parables in the in the in the, in the word, the Bible talking about, and you know, this master, you know, gave the servant, you know, talent, went and came back and came to collect and things like that. That's what he's talking about. What you were given, you owe to multiply. You owe to invest it so it can produce fruit, man. And that, would, that, that fruit will be the new man. <clears throat> you, can't, you know what I'm saying? That fruit will be a new man. Okay? When you walk by, you know, and then you go in a bush and you see a tree that has fruit, it's beautiful to see, man. Maybe to see how people are under a and trying to get the fruit. They want to eat from that, from that tree because that tree produces fruit. But if you go and pass by, by by a fruit that's dry, nobody want to be around it, a fruit that's dry, man. 
Nobody want to be people that are around fruit, uh, uh, so like a, a, a tree that dry, okay, without fruit because they blind themselves. They don't know better. Okay, so we have to, in order for us to grow, we have to fear the Most High. And sometimes, the way I look at it, even in my own life in Babylon, what I found out is like, in Babylon, when you grew up in Babylon, you live here for long, one thing about the fear of the Most High, you don't have it because society shows you not to fear the Most High. And it's, a, it's embedded psychologically, it's embedded inside whether you want to you know, acknowledge it or not. So it's up to you now to put it on the table and recognize that, listen, I'm going to have to do some effort in order for me, okay, to be able, okay, to fear the Most High, man. Fearing the Most High is very important when a woman, you know she's married. <clears throat> Even if the man is, is in Ghana, Nigeria, wherever, you know, across the sea, uh, the sea's like, and then she likes you, like, no, nah, man. No, nah, man, I like her, everything, but no, nah, I can't do this, man. This is wrong, man. Cause she's promised at the end of the day you know or somebody come some scamming program say yo we can make money quickly and you know deep inside that you know you're not allowed to do that you're like no man. yes it's all good i'll get a few bucks and that you know make money do my thing and that but you know what i'm going to leave it i'd rather go and earn a hard buck at least you know the most i know that my heart is clean and i'm trying but if you don't have the faith you will look like that and like that boom you do your thing who saw you who saw you? No one saw you, man, unless the Holy Spirit reveal it to the brother around you. He ain't gonna know it. And that's what's going on in this truth. You got brother are into sin, but because the brother around them are not spiritual, they're gonna get to see it, man. You know? And then you think about it, when you're in a camp and there's brother that are sinning, that those spirit jumps, it weaken, it weaken that camp. And that's how agent and spy can come in. Because if you're in the spirit, you'll be able to see signs. You'll be able to see certain things. You won't overlook things. But if you're not in the spirit, agent and spy will come and, li and be with you and act like, you know, they're part of you, but they're just sent, man. And when you say agent, it could be government, governmental agent, but also it could be spiritual agent. They come here to dim your light. Come here to dim your light, man. Okay? Right. So let's go to uh, 2 Peter 2 and 9. Second Peter, okay. Second Peter, Second Peter, chapter two and nine, and let's read. All right. And you read, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation. And to reserve the unjust, the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punishment. <clears throat> so no matter what you know, messy jam you find yourself into as a man of the Lord, if you're willing to come out of it, there's no limit when it comes to the, to the most side, man. Because we might have limit, but the most side don't have limit, man. You see, we have we might have limit, but the most side don't have limit, man. So like you. We might have limit, but the most I don't have limit, man. The most I is capable of keeping you out of any situation, man. You know? He will keep you out of any situation, but you gotta show to him that you really want this. You wanna show wanna show. Sometimes he will let you in a sin for a while, but he will see you praying and fasting. You like, you know what? You fall, you come back. You fall, you come back. You come up, you come up, you come up. You don't stay down. You stay up. And one day, boom, the Musa going to get rid of because he was like, this guy was trying, man. Okay? But if you find yourself in a sin, in this truth, and nothing happened to you, be, be, watch the space like they say, man. Watch the space because <laughs> the Musa, I mean, he got, he got a day reserved for you, man. Don't you know that a lot of brothers that will find themselves in concentration, concentration camp and that's because they didn't want to hearken into the most. They were playing with it. The most I would punish them, man. A lot of them would die in this, in this situation. Now, we got, you know, men of the Lord that were programmed to be martyrs. Yes, the most I would put the spirit of strength in them to face the guillotine or whatever. But a lot of the brother that will be in that situation is because, you know, they didn't, they was playing. The most I know who is who, man, this truth, man. The most, so you can lie to us, but you can lie to your brother, but you can't lie to the most I, man. So you know you gotta be, you gotta be, you gotta be, 
you know, you got to be um, ready, man. You got to be ready to really do this work because you're dealing with the king of terror. <laughs> and that's a dangerous thing to deal with. That's a dangerous <laughs> God to deal with. You know, it's not playing, man. <coughs> huh? Right, and also one thing about discipline. Discipline, you know, first of all, no one say, oh, we men of the Lord. Who were the original men of the Lord? Yahweh Shai, the 12 apostles, right? Okay. And they were disciples. And I tell them disciples come from being disciplined, man. So you have to be disciplined. One thing about, you know, this walk, you have to be disciplined. Okay. You have to be able, you know, to make sure that, you know, you're not wishy-washy. Okay, but if you have a discipline, your work will be wishy-washy. You will be, you won't be like focused. You know, you won't be able to conquer. Like I say again, I'll repeat again. You won't be able to con conquer the old man. Cause one thing about the old man, he's a sleek old man. Basically, he been with you. He knows you. He knows how to get you. Sometimes he he can act like he's gone, but he's not gone. He's just playing dead. And at the right time, when you're sleeping away and you're acting happy, go, you know. Happy go lucky, boom, he strike back. Do you know what I'm saying? He gets you in another jam, another messy jam. So you gotta be aware, man. Book Book of Baruch 4, okay, verse 13. They knew not his statute, nor walked in the ways of his commandment, nor trod in the path of discipline in his righteousness. Now, so to to attain you know a certain level of righteousness, you gotta, you know, it start with discipline. You know, because we disciples, right? The Bible says, endure hardness like a good soldier, right? So it means that you have to be disciplined. Okay? Disciplined with women. When you see a woman out there as a man of the Lord, a man of the Lord is not supposed to be having all of those women. Because at the end of the day, all of that is energy, man. You need strength. You need energy to walk the path. This, this, this walk is not an easy one. It's very hard, man. Waking up early to go to Babylon, find work, coming back, you have to do the work of the Mosai, you know. You know, sometimes there's nothing around, man, because the friend that you're, they're not friends, man. You know, you find yourself on your own most of the time. you got good brothers that, you know, are with you and give you that good energy. But if you got a woman, you know, a worldly woman, she's going to drain you. And she's going to drain you. And a woman, today, these women, that's why Jeremiah 31 and 22 tell her, there was this, there's a new thing under the sun, and under the sun, a woman shall, shall compass a man. Because they will, they, will, they will take you. All they want to do is take your energy. They want, when they see a man full of energy and things, their, thing, their first their thing in their, in their mind, the first thing in their mind is to capture that, that, that spirit, man. Because a lot of them being destroyed by the old men, the men they had women, I mean, they had children with. So a woman, she always want to be desired. So she want to capture you so you can give her that desire. You know, you can look at her and say, baby, you're beautiful. Or you can give her your energy. Because that's women. That's why they get dressed in the morning and go out. That's why they do all these weaves and all these things that they do because they want the men to look at them and they want to take that energy, man. The, the soul catches. So nowadays, a man of the Lord, really, you don't really need a woman like that unless she show you that she's in the truth because there's a lot of women as well that are playing games. They act like they're in the truth, but they're not in the truth. So you have to be beware. You have to beware of that, man. Okay? That's why you have to be disciplined. Very important. Okay? Right. Let me check something quickly. See, like your Israel. Right? Okay. So we're going to read like, uh, you know... Uh, Romans 6 and 6, man, we're going to say Shalom, man, you know, uh, Romans 6 and 6, and I'll read a word. Romans 6 and 6, and it reads, Say, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we not serve sin. Okay? For he that is dead is freed from sin. Alright? Let me read the number precept again, a quick one. Uh, let's go to Colossians 3. What does Colossians 3 say? Um, Colossians 3. Okay. 9. I read what I say. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have puffed up the old man with his deed 
and have put on the new man which is renewed in, renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So the new man is a very important part of this work. Having the new man, manifesting the new man, that's all we need to do, man. You know, we can know precept, we can have camps, we can go out there, claim to be, you know, Hebrew Israelite, claim to be men of the Lord, wear them garment. But if we don't renew the new man, if we don't, if we know real about this walk, when no one sees us, then we fake him, man. And trust me, you already know, man. All right. First Peter 4 and 17. The Moses is coming. He's going to knock on every door. Do, 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 do. You know, so we're going to have to be sincere in that, in that walk, man. So, yeah, I hope you were edified. We die, we'll see Shalom. And I will turn to the east. Kalaya, Yahawa, Bashem, Yahushai, Waha, Rukha, Padash. Boom, Yashurala. Shalom, my brothers. Love.